Hello, everybody. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about two new discrete distributions, the binomial and the negative binomial. And as much as they sound similar, the negative binomial distribution is actually much more closely related to the geometric distribution. You want to know how? Stick around. Let's jump right in with the binomial distribution. Here is the setup, sounding very similar to our setup for the geometric distribution. We're gonna have a sequence of independent trials of an experiment where each trial can result in one of two possible outcomes, success or failure. And we're gonna have a parameter, little p, which is going to be a probability between zero and one. And that's gonna represent the probability of success on any one of those trials. Now, before with the geometric random variable, we counted the number of trials up to and including the first success. And we also looked at it a different way and counted the number of failures before the first success. For the binomial distribution, we're actually going to fix the number of trials. We're going to look at exactly n trials and n is going to be fixed and another parameter of this model. So I've got n independent trials of an experiment each resulting in one of two possible outcomes, success or failure, and little p is the probability of success on any one trial. I'm gonna let our random variable x count the number of successes in n trials. Then x is said to have a binomial distribution, and we write it like this. x squiggly line has the distribution bin for binomial, and then an n comma p. So let's find the probability mass function. To do this, I'm going to keep P kind of generic, but for simplicity, I'm going to fix N, the number of trials, to be five. This is going to be easily generalizable. And let's look at the probability that X equals a number like three. So I've got five trials of an experiment and the outcomes are success and failure and, and maybe another success and then two failures. And I've got five tries and I want to know the probability of seeing exactly three successes. So there's many ways this can happen. I can see success, 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 failure, failure, or I can see success, success, failure, success, failure, or, and the list goes on. So there's many ways for me to have five trials with exactly three successes and two failures. Because these events are disjoint, because this notation, success, 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 failure, failure, means specifically success on the first trial and success on the second trial and success on the third trial and failure on the fourth and fifth trials. And this, this other outcome over here, success, success, failure, success, means success on the first trial and second trial, but failure on the third and so on. These are disjoint events. You can't have, for example, success on the third trial and also failure on the third trial. Because they're disjoint, we get to break up this probability, this big or, this big union, into a sum of individual probabilities. So let's look at one. Let's look at the first one. Because the trials of the experiment were assumed to be independent, I can break this up into a product because this SSSFF represents a success and a success and a success and a failure and a failure. The and is an intersection. And we're looking at the different trials and they're independent. So by independence, we get to break this up into a product. And every time I have probability of success, I get little p and probability of failure, one minus p. So in all for this term, I get p cubed times one minus p squared. Now every term will look like this. Every term in this sum is going to be p cubed times one minus p squared. So we would be done figuring out the expression for the probability that x equals three if we knew how to count these terms. For example, if there were five terms there, then we would get p cubed times one minus p squared over and over again five times for a total of five times p cubed times one minus p squared. Well, how many terms are there really? I just made up that five. We have five positions and in those five positions, we wanna choose three positions in which to place the successes. So we have five choose three terms. And if you take a moment to work that out with factorials, that is the number 10. 
And if you decided instead to figure out how many ways you can place the two failures among those five trials, five choose two happens to be the same thing as five choose three. So if the numbers in the bottom add up to the number in the top, you get the same thing by the symmetry of the definition. It's n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And you can flip those things in the denominator. So I think we've done it. The probability that x, the number of successes, is 3 in the case where n equals 5 and the success probability is p is 5 choose 3, which is again 10 times p cubed times 1 minus p squared. And to go more generally, we had a general p, but let's make n general and let's make x general. So n trials of an experiment and x is the number of successes. What is the probability that x equals some fixed little x? So I'm gonna have n slots or positions in which I have to put exactly x s's and the remaining n minus x positions I have to fill with failure. And so the probability of seeing those, since the trials are independent, I'm gonna get a p every time I see an s and a one minus p every time I see an f and multiply those for a total of p to the x, one minus p to the n minus x. And the total number of ways for us to spread out those x successes in n trials is n choose x. So we've got the probability mass function for the binomial random variable with parameters n and p. This random variable takes on the value zero through n and the probability of seeing any other value is zero. Next up, we have the negative binomial distribution, which is not actually that closely related to the binomial distribution, although all distributions are related in some way. It's actually much more similar to the geometric distribution that we talked about in a previous video. So for the geometric distribution, we had a sequence of trials. There was no cutoff. It was not n trials. We had success or failure possible on every trial. The trials were independent and we had little p being the probability of success on any one trial. So one way we define the geometric distribution was to let X be the number of trials up to and including the first success. And a second way we define the distribution, we let X be the number of failures before we see the first success. The negative binomial is really similar, but we're gonna go not until we see the first success, but maybe the second or third or fourth this is actually going to be another parameter for the model. And I'm gonna call it R, where R is some positive integer. So, independent trials, success or failure on any one trial. Little p is the probability of success on any one trial. Someone gave us a parameter R, which is a positive integer. And I'm gonna let X be the number of trials up to and including the Rth success. Now, to, in order to see the Rth success, we need to have at least R trials. For example, you can't see five successes when you only have two trials. And that means that this random variable takes the values R, R plus one, R plus two, on up. There's no upper bound. And so what is the probability that the random variable capital X equals little x? Well, if the number of trials up to and including the first success is little x, imagine x positions or slots and I'm gonna put in successes and failures, and I want exactly our successes and the rest of them failures, but the last slot is locked in. It must be a success because that's our stopping criterion for this, this, this random variable. We're gonna go up to and including the Rth success, so we're always gonna stop on a success. So now I have to figure out how many ways can I put the remaining R minus one successes in the remaining x minus one positions. And that's x minus one, choose r minus one. And then I'll get a p for every success and there's exactly r of those, so p to the r. And I'll get one minus p for the remaining failures. There's a total of x trials minus the r successes, so one minus p to the x minus r. And this is the probability mass function for one version of the negative binomial distribution and the values that it can take on are r, r plus one, r plus two on up, all integers greater than or equal to r. One way we might write this is x squiggly line has the distribution neg bin, 
uh, R and P, writing the two parameters there. But I warn you that the negative binomial distribution does not have a standard, as standard a notation as our other random variables. So people might write this a little different. They might switch these. Um, so just be careful that when you're reading things in books or on the internet, you know what you're looking at. And even more so, be careful because you wanna know which kind of negative binomial distribution you're looking at. We just defined X to be the number of trials up to and including the R success. And if R is one, that is the geometric distribution, at least our first version. But the second geometric distribution counted the number of failures before the first success and a second version of the negative binomial is going to count the number of failures before the R success. So doing that, if you want to find the probability mass function for X, which again is the number of failures before the R success, you have to imagine a series of positions that is going to be a total of X plus R positions because there's X failures and R successes for a total of X plus R positions. Just like before, we're gonna stop counting when we hit the rth success. So the last position, the trial is locked in to be a success there. And out of the remaining uh, x plus r minus one positions, I need to choose r minus one places to put the remaining successes. Equivalently, out of the remaining x plus r minus one positions, I can choose x positions in which to place the failures. So we've got a probability mass function. Uh, I've written it out as X plus R minus one choose X, but that could also be X plus R minus one choose R minus one, then multiplied by a P for every S, so that's P to the R, and a one minus P for every failure. And then in this case, X counted the number of failures up to and including the R success. So X equals little x. So I want uh, little x failures. And this holds for x equals zero, one, two, three on up, because if you're counting the number of failures until you see the rth success, where someone has given you this integer r, then you might see success, 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 right off the bat, r in a row, and have zero failures. And that's why that's a possibility. Let's just briefly talk about a couple of interesting connections between some of the distributions we've looked at so far. If you want to look at these connections with uh, more formal mathematics and others that are more interesting, maybe you'd want to take a course in mathematical statistics. But we're going to use our intuition here to find a couple of distributions of sums. So suppose I have a random variable x1 from the geometric distribution with parameter p and the subscript zero here means this is the one that starts from zero. And then suppose I have an X2 independent and from the same exact distribution. So we say that X1 and X2 are independent and identically distributed from the geometric distribution starting from zero with parameter P. Independent and identically distributed. That is usually abbreviated as IID. So the question I have for you is what is the distribution of X1 plus X2? For the geometric starting from zero, the X1 or X2 is counting the number of failures before the first success. So X1 plus X2, you can think of just going through the trials, failure, 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 success. And then you've got your X1, which is the number of trials to get there. And now you're starting all over. Failure, 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 success. So when you add those two geometric random variables, you're really getting a total number of failures up to and including the second success. And that is one of our versions of the negative binomial distribution with R equals two and the parameter P. And this is going to be the version of the negative binomial that starts from zero because X1 and X2 can take on the value zero. So the sum can take on the value zero. In fact, if you add up K of these geometrics, you'll get a negative binomial distribution with parameters K and P. And if you add up the other kind of geometrics, the one that starts from one, the one that counts not the number of failures until, but the number of trials up to and including the first success. If you add geometrics like that, you're gonna 
get uh, a minimum value of one plus a minimum value of one plus a minimum value of one. And if you were to add up K of those, the minimum value of that sum is K. And that's actually going to have the other negative binomial distribution with R equals K. For another interesting connection, suppose that X1 and X2 are IID independent and identically distributed from the Bernoulli distribution with parameter P. I just want to take a moment to say here that identically distributed not only means they come from the same distribution, but also the parameters are the same. So clearly the Bernoulli distribution and geometric are different distributions, but the Bernoulli distribution with P equals one half and the Bernoulli distribution with P equals one third are also different distributions. So identically distributed means the same name for the distribution and the same parameters. My question now to you is what is the distribution of the sum of X1 and X2? And again, take a course in mathematical statistics. If you want to go through this stuff really rigorously, we're just kind of reasoning our way through it here. Now, the Bernoulli random variables that we're adding up are ones and zero. We get one with probability P and zero with probability one minus P. And when you add two Bernoullis, that is like having two tries at getting a one and maybe seeing zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one. And if you add those two numbers, that will give you the total number of successes that you saw in those two separate Bernoulli experiments. How do we count the number of successes in two trials of an experiment that can be success or failure with probability P and one minus P and independence between the trials? That's the binomial distribution. In this case with parameters two and P. In the next video, we're going to talk about the Poisson distribution, which is awesome for counting so many things and its relationship to the binomial distribution. So I wouldn't want to miss it if I were you. So hopefully I will see you in the next one.